Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Hi, my name is Imran bin Muhammad Zaki My matrix number is 63257 And my supervisor is Mr. Asfa Satari Welcome to my presentation So today, I'm going to present about my FYP That is Smart Switch System for Electrical Appliances in Household Okay, so we start with the uh, introduction. Okay, so why I wanted to do this smart switch? Our world nowadays are going for industrial revolution 4.0. It is to build an environment in which virtual and physical production process works together. So one of the IR 4.0 technology is the Internet of Things, IoT. IoT creates a connection between the physical and digital world. So one of the uh, IoT technology is the smart home. You know, smart home, we have many kinds of devices used in smart home, but the things that I wanted to focus is on the most basic thing that is the switch, okay? The problem statement. What problem that inspires me to do this kind of project? So we have three problems that inspires me to do this. First one is uh, insufficient time of the people. High cost of living cause people to work days and night thus reducing their time to do simple things such as switching the light switch every day on their house. Second one is the human error, okay? So forgetting to turn off the switch when they're leaving their house can cause energy waste. Touching socket with wet hands can cause short circuit or worse, they can be dead, okay? And last one is the elderly and disabled, okay? Simple tasks such as flipping the light switch may be impossible for elderly and disabled which has mobility issues, you know? And then the objectives, okay? What needs to be achieved in this project? In this project, the first one is I wanted to design a switch system for homeowner that can not save time, monitor energy consumption, and also provide automation to the house. Second one is I wanted to provide device that can access household appliances remotely via a cloud server and a local Wi-Fi using mobile device. And the last one is to provide, I wanted to provide household appliances with an additional protection system, okay? Three objectives need to be achieved. And then we go to the second part that is literature review, okay? What, what does happen in this world, okay? So as I've shown here, as you can see here, this is the society activities in the day, okay? So I've highlighted these three things that is sleeping, working, and also doing sports, okay? All of these activities are being done when they're not at your home or they are in conscious, okay? So that's why I wanted to create a device that can remotely, that can remotely access their switches or their device at home whenever they are in the world and also that can automatically do the task although they are in conscious or they are sleeping okay so next one is the electrical incident in malaysia this uh, table is uh, obtained from energy commission malaysia so as you can see 853 incidents happen from year 2002 to year 2016 due to electricity wow that's a very big number the next one is we go to the elderly and the disabled in Malaysia. As you can see, the picture on the left, you can see that on 2019, there are 3.4 million of elderly in Malaysia. And it is estimated on 2020, there will be 3.5 million elderly. So that is an increasing of 500,000 of elderly in Malaysia. You know, that's a lot of people. And then the second picture you can see this is the registered uh, disabled category in Malaysia, this pie chart, okay? So you can see the green one is the most registered disabled issue that is physical disability, okay? So for elderly and disabled, mobility limitation is the, is the biggest problem and we need to solve that problem. Okay, next we go to the type of sockets. We have two types of socket. The first one is the conventional sockets, okay? Conventional sockets are prone to overcurrent and short circuit due to zero protection. Uh, due to zero protection, you know? Our appliance has protection, but our socket doesn't. And if the fuse happen to be failure, you can have this picture at your home, okay? 
And then that's why we wanted to convert it to the smart socket. That is my system, smart switch system that has double protection via fuse and relay. We also can remote control and monitor appliances using mobile apps. We also has on off schedule that provides automation that saves users time. We also have multiple connection modes that is local and cloud that allow low latency switching. Okay, I will explain this more later on the methodology. Okay, next. Previous research, we need to see the previous limitation and we need to make it better, okay? So, the first one is the YSOB. Second one is the Bluetooth Smart Plug. And then, we have Arduino and GSM-based smart energy meter. And this is the commercial product that's, that is Gemini. From all of the previous research, I've combined and summarized that into a table so as you can see, this is the research gap, okay? So the blue one is my system that is smart switch system. So the connection type is the best. We use the low cost and low latency connection that is Wi-Fi. The data output is using the mobile app because nowadays people are using phone every day, 24 hours. So we use the mobile app that is convenient for them. And then uh, the majority of them doesn't have schedule features. So we put that schedule feature features in the apps. And also the display, we're not using any OLED or LCD, we're just using LED, okay? Why LED? Because LED use low consumption of power, thus making this device is more uh, energy friendly, okay? And the last one is for protection, okay? Majority of them doesn't have protection, but some of them use fuse and octocoupler, but we're going to make safety as our priority and going to give the maximum safety to our user. So we use double protection that has fuse and also relay. And now the last part is the methodology. So we have two uh, parts of the methodology is the first one is software development and the second one is the hardware development. So for the software development, software we use is the Arduino IDE. So we use the compile coding and upload it to microprocessor. And the second one is freezing used to create circuit schematics. Third one is the Firebase used as a medium online for a real time data transfer. And the last one is Android Studio. We used to code and design the GUI for the mobile apps. And then now the method methodology of the hardware development. This is the architecture concept, okay? The upper part is uh, the supply. We are using Malaysian 240 volt AC supply, 50 hertz of frequency with a 30 amps of fuse, okay? It is then fitted to the current sensor, the voltage sensor, uh, and then to the solid state relay, and then it is connected to the socket outlet. And then for the bottom part, is we have the controlling architecture. So we have the first one is the buck converter. Buck converter is going to convert to 40 volt AC to 5 volt DC using the step down transformer and also the diode. And then the current is going to be fitted into the fuse, uh, 5M fuse for protection and it is fitted into the ESP32 microcontroller. Okay. So ESP32 is the main brain of the device. It is going to obtain data from the current sensor, from the voltage sensor, and it is going to analyze wherever it needs to open the relay or turn off the relay. And last one is the ESP32 will output the states of the relay to the LED and also send the voltage and current to the mobile apps and the cloud database that is Firebase. Next, this is also an architecture concept, but it is in picture illustration. Let's focus on the relay first, okay? The reason why we use solid state relay instead of mechanical relay is because of its reliability. Mechanical relay is prone to mechanical failure, but solid state relay doesn't. So this is the circuit diagram. So the next one is we're going to be a bit more detailed on the flow chart of the coding, okay? So the starting of the coding, we are using variable declaration, okay? And then we create local access point called soft AP. And then it checks, does the user connected? If yes, it is going to enter the local connection mode. If no, after 30 seconds, it is going to be connected to the cloud. And then it, it is going to send voltage and current reading to mobile apps. And then it goes to the switch state. Uh, it will check two conditions. If these two conditions were, uh, were true, then the relay will on. If one of them is not true, uh, the relay will be turned off. Okay, so the first one is going to check, is the mobile app switch on? If yes, does the current below or same? If yes, the relay is going to be on. If one of them is false, it is the relay is going to be 
turn off okay so this is where protection from the relay comes in if the current higher density amps oh it is going to give the relay off so lastly this is the cost estimation of this hardware so you can see that the total is just 71.6 ringgit and this is the reference of the diagrams and pictures in the slide and yeah thank you for listening to my uh, fyp presentation i hope you guys have a blessing day so assalamualaikum